What's really good, ladies and gentlemen? I know it's been a while. I know it's been a minute, but we back. We're going to try to go live on YouTube a little bit more in 2024 because we got a good podcast called Content and Cash. We're going to make sure we provide great content for that. But today, what we're doing is we're doing a follow-up video. If you've seen the AI tie version of the follow-up video that talked about why professionals are starting to use templates more, we're going to talk about that a little bit. So we got some follow-up things I want to talk about. But before we do that, we got to roll this graphics. We got to roll this intro. Let's get it. You're listening to Content and Cash, a Flash Film Academy podcast. If you want to learn how to take pretty pictures, this is not the place. But if you're ready to make a living by learning the business behind the camera, buckle up because it's time to turn passion into profit with your host, Ty Turner. What's really good? It's your boy, Ty. Again, if you're looking to grow all your having better pictures and all that, this ain't the place. All right. So we're going to cut straight to it. We're going to get straight to it real quick. All my gold members after this, we're still doing our accountability meeting. And these videos will most likely be on Tuesdays around one o'clock, probably during the day. All right. Because we got people in different time zones, different parts of the world that would love to participate. So we're going to chop it up with them. But if you've seen that video, you understand the importance of not trying to be super creative with every client. If clients don't have the budget for creativity, then we kind of got to stay away from it. Plus, clients don't care like we think they do. Clients want results. Clients want things that help them achieve something. I tell people all the time when it comes to B2B and working with businesses, clients don't want video. They want the results of that video. They don't want to post on social media. They want the results of what comes from posting on social media. So we got to keep the the idea of results up front when we're talking, working, and dealing with B2B clients. So important that we do that. So important that we do that. So again, let me make sure I post this um, because what we're going to do is we're going to definitely talk about this more on the app and our after hours where we're going to, you know, have our accountability meeting and talk about some of the wins that guys are doing some of the losses or lessons. And we're going to learn from them as a group. We do that every single Wednesday at six o'clock central time. we got a bunch of people that'll be on that. But anyway, let's get into it. Number one is understanding the balance between creativity and practicality and professional video. We as content creators need to, we got to set that, we got to draw that line. And a lot of times when a lot of you guys come from working from B to C or shoot music videos where you got to go above and beyond and do all these graphics and all this crazy stuff, you get over to the corporate side and you realize you don't have to do all of that. It's about what the video do for the client and how effective it is working with the viewer. What, what What kind of call to action do it bring? How is it helping people do whatever the client needs it to do? And I tell people all the time, you don't have to go crazy. You just got to create something that works. And the great thing about having a niche is when you create something that works, you can do it over and over again. You have results. Shout out to Brian from, from Ipsy. I'm from Detroit. What up, though? Let me do that. Let me go ahead and do that for you real quick anyway. So we want to definitely make sure that we are, we, we are exploring the middle point between creativity um, aspirations and then the industry demand, we have to define it and set that bar. We can't go crazy with it. Big shout out to my boy, Marcus out in, uh, out in Arizona. That's what I'm talking about. Um, we also have to understand the client needs over a high concept idea. So we need to fairly, and this is why a lot of times, you know, when we do have our, our gold meetings, we talk about understanding what the client wants. Sometimes it's not what they ask you for. They're asking you for a video. It's up to you to determine what the purpose of that video is. Because if you deliver what they ask for and they don't get the results they think they can get, guess who the bad guy is? Guess who's going to get blamed? Guess who's not going to get a review? Guess who's not going to get referred and called back? 
So me, whenever I talk to clients, my goal is to understand what is the purpose of this video? What do you wish to achieve with this video? Because often I'll have ideas or different directions we need to go into to get there. And my directions are based on experience. Some directions aren't. They're looking out on the super chat. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. I wonder if it won't let me post it on here, but appreciate you with the super chat, bro. St. Louis, that's what's up. That's what's up. So let's talk about let's talk about the number two step, right? Which is budget constraints and creative choices, right? What are the budget constraints? If somebody's paying you less than, I'm gonna be real. If it's less than fifty thousand, you shouldn't be going crazy getting creative. They're not paying for creativity. And often we as creatives want to get creative in all these camera angles and the client just wanted to work. So your job, when you work with a niche, this is, I'm going to punch you in the throat with the idea of niche over and over again, because it's super important as you're working with a niche, you know what works and what don't. If you don't know, you need to get with your beta client and test it out and develop it. That way you can walk in front. Your, your doctor is not experimenting on you. He's only writing prescriptions and having you do things he know works. And he'll send you to a specialist to do things he don't know work. You got a foot problem, he's going to send you to a foot specialist. Got a heart problem, you're going to a heart specialist. That heart specialist has a back pocket full of answers, full of solutions for your problems. Because all they see is heart problems. And they've seen it all before. And they got a solution for everything. So you as a content creator that's working with businesses within your niche should be the same way. You should understand with, with this amount of budget, this is the results we're looking to produce. It's not about creativity. It's all about results. And you should be, you should be walking into that situation. Um, think of that. Um, you also need case studies to navigate different, uh, different uh, budget constraints, right? So is you can get clients to buy more when you can sit down in front of them and say, Hey client, I know that your budget is around $2,000, but let me show you the results we got with $10,000 compared to the results we got with $2,000. When it makes sense for a client, a client is more likely to pull the trigger on it. Hey, I did tell you that we want 50 people in here walking through the door and not six. So if you're saying this amount is what I need to get in that ballpark, let's do it. A lot of times we want more money from a client and we don't understand how to make the price go higher. We don't understand where, what they value. We just think more camera angles. I gave him more camera angles and a slider and a gimbal and a drone. He should be happy. He don't give a damn about all that. He don't know nothing about it. If he did, he would be flying his own damn drone and not hiring you to do it. So since he don't, understand the crap you trying to sell him help him understand what he's trying to achieve we talk about this a lot and i'm gonna post this and pop you in the face because we talk about it majorly in module one module one is about understanding your client and and learning what they value i don't have a one size fit all i'm not gonna sit here and tell y'all to do x y and z i'm that's it's, i wouldn't be i wouldn't be honest with you i'd be lying to you so the goal is to understand your niche and then learn how to find out what they value so that you can build your business around it. People that go to McDonald's value a fast, cheap experience. They don't value a great tasting burger. They value uh, consistency. So no matter what McDonald's I go to, the chicken nuggets are shaped the same. The cheeseburger look the same. The wrap in the paper, you know, the Coca-Cola tastes just as good everywhere. They want it fast. I don't have a lot of time. I need to go through the drive through I need to go in. I got these kids in the back. They hungry. They value cheap dollar menu, combo meals. I can, I can get a lot for, for cheap, or at least that used to be the case. McDonald's understand those people value those three things over the taste of a burger. Cause we all know a place that make better burgers than McDonald's. We don't know a place that sell more burgers than McDonald's. And I've used that example over and over again. It's going to click. Um, the next step is the evolution of the design template in, in modern production, right? And it's people want to stay away from it. They don't want to use templates. I use the hell out of templates. And you should too, because you don't have the money to be creating graphics from scratch unless it's in their budget. And, and think about it too. You could spend every day on a template website looking through templates. 
and you still may not see a graphic somewhere that you've seen before. Your client is going nowhere near them websites. They wouldn't know if it's a template or not if it, to save their life. You live in a world where you're looking at them all day long and maybe you can spot one or two. Maybe you've seen one or two. They're nowhere near that. So they don't care about templates like you think they care about templates. Um, and, and these are things that you can use to enhance your, your quality. These things add value to what you offer for a fraction of the price. I go on places like Envato and I buy a, a thousand lower thirds for $39.99. I do it all the time. I'll never use all of them, never run through all of them, never get a chance to even touch all of them. But they add value because they instantly make uh, they instantly make my content look better. Instantly make my content look better. Um, so also the next, the next step I want to talk about is kind of the perception of originality, right? And the industry versus the audience. You got to understand that there's a big difference between that. And, and you can't let that get to you. You're, you see, we are creatives. We got a creative ego. We want to be this artist, but we're in a field that's, doesn't necessarily cater to creatives. Like, it's great that you are creative, but create some results, bro. That's what they want. Create some results. Don't just make me something pretty. We're not artists. Artists can make something pretty in hopes to sell it. As content creators, our goal is to create something that drives results. It can be as ugly as it want to be. And if y'all got questions, go ahead, ask them. We'll jump on them. It can be as ugly as it needs to be as long as it works. And we got to take that ego out of trying to be creative and do something pretty. Lead that at home. Go do that with your kids and your personal projects. But for businesses, all they care about is results. And you got to understand also the, the, the industry, the standards, our standards don't align with our audience standards. Our standards are way up here. The audience don't care. Like, and I'll give you an example, something that I had to learn, right? And I had to learn working with this channel compared to work. When I first started my YouTube channel, man, I was, I was in the field all day. I didn't want to come home and set up lights and mics. And I was just shooting with whatever. And I will be giving people valid information on how to grow their business. You know what they would say? Oh man, your exposure off. What? Oh man, your audios. Um, and I had to understand my audience is a bunch of guys or girls who sit around and work with this stuff all day. So they care about that. So for them to, to, to hear what I'm saying, I'm going to have to really set up a station where I can cut it on and film and everything is everything. Think about it like this. You as a content creator, your family can watch them Timu movies all day and night. They can be poorly shot. Audio can be from the camera. It can be stuff in the background. They don't see none of that. They just enjoying the fact that such and such about to get caught up by her husband doing so. Like they're into the story. We as content creators, it's hard for us to get into the story because we're just looking at, man, this junk is terrible. Like what, how would you, why would you even, where's the light? It's so grainy. It's, wh why would you shoot this? Is this in 30 frames a sec? Like we're caught up in that. 99.9% .9 of the world is not. You have to understand who your audience is. You have to understand who your audience is. Um, so, and last but not least, it's about maximizing efficiency with available tools. It's about maximizing efficiency. I don't want to spend two hours creating uh, lower thirds from scratch when I can drag and drop something on in a second. You go back to the video, I talk about billable versus non-billable hours. Do you really want to dedicate an hour, two hours of your project to creating graphics from scratch? Is that in the budget? Because most times it's not. And if you're making under $50,000, $60,000 for a 10-minute video, really a two-minute video, if you're making less than fifty dollars or $60,000, it's not in your budget, fam. Drag and drop a pre-made template on that video and keep it moving. Put that time into color grading or color, not even color grading really at that point, put that time into color correction. You have to understand, and I know people feel like I wanna do so much, I wanna give so much, I wanna put so much into this project. They didn't pay you for it, fam. Focus on results and only results. Stop trying to be creative 
If you, I, I guarantee you this, me and you can work for the same client. I can turn in an ugly video with a conversion rate of 50%. You can turn in a polished video shot in the Grand Canyon, co-star in Brad Pitt that has a conversion rate of 15%. My video can be 50,000. Your video can be 25,000. They're going to call me back every single time, fam. When they look at that conversion rate, they're going to call me back every single time. They don't care about how it looks. They want consistent conversions. So keep that in mind before you go out here killing yourself, trying to be something that, that is not needed. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. It's very important that you understand that. Um, so, you know, the what I do is I have a set of templates that I customize to my liking and I save them. So whenever I want to use it, I drag and drop. I'm giving you another tip. I'll give you another tip while we're here that I, that I usually save in my back pocket. When I work with a client long term, I like to customize um, a certain a certain amount of titles and transitions just for that client. So what I like to do is I like to get their, um, their brand guy or their style guy to understand their colors, their fonts, their placement. And I'll create about 10 different templates or I'll edit 10 different templates to match their brand guy. And I save it. So whenever I work with that client, their lower thirds for them and anybody else in the company is of that uh, style. And I'm gonna tell you why I do it. One, it's efficient, it's fast, it's easy. That's, that's cool, whatever. That's that's half of it. The most important part is once they approve it, you never have to get approval for graphics again. You never have to get approval for graphics again. And I mean, what I like to do is I like to, this is another little, I, I shouldn't even be, I'm giving y'all too much, but I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you. Boom, y'all ain't seen that in a while. What I like to do is whenever I work with a client and we're working long-term, and this is definitely for my, this is definitely for my, my gold members. So I'm gonna pop that up too. Whenever I'm working with a client, right? And we're working long term. I like to send you over a graphic video. So it'll be a simple video with a picture of the client and it'll show all of the graphics we plan to use with this client, right? So it'll be opening, opening images or opening um, title pages, lower thirds and any other graphic. Let's say, for instance, we have clients where we use infographics, right? I'll send a mock infographic. I will let the client approve the the info all the graphics before we send over a final edit they get to approve all of the graphics before we send over a final edit that way i know once we start editing and we start slapping these graphics on i will never get a revision over the type of graphics used i also let the client pick for music or send them a, send them a sample of the music we plan on using there you go. These are things that I do with my clients, especially when we're working long term to make sure things are right. Now, I'm going to give you another gym alert. I'm going to give you a lot today. Since you tuned in, I'm going to give you a lot today. I cannot tell you how many one-time clients this has turned into subscription clients. Because once we get everything set up, the idea of going somewhere else and starting over sucks. The idea of, man, I got to go to another company that don't have these graphics that don't, even if they buy raw footage, they don't get my graphic pack. I keep my graphic pack. You only get my graphic pack when you work with me. That keeps them home. I cannot tell you how many one-off clients this has turned into, that, that, that this particular item has turned into lifetime clients. I cannot tell you how often that's happened because they love the graphic pack. And was it a simple Pixel Film Studio Envato M graphics? It, it was, yeah, that's all it was. I just tweaked the colors and the font to make it mine, to make it match their brand. That was it. You know, like I blew a client away by having a lower third that had their picture in it. They were done. And it, it built up at the bottom, kind of like this. It was a wrap for them. It was a wrap. Didn't charge them extra for it. But when they seen it, they were like, what? That's crazy. Y'all put, put that much time into creating that? Absolutely. This is what we do for our clients. We understand the importance of quality graphics, even though it's all drag and drop templates. Let me give you another gym alert. 
I'm giving I'm giving you a bunch today. In part two, I go in part two of the video, which is on the uh, Flash from Academy side, I talk about how and where to find these graphics. I talk about what to look for. I talk about different things you can add on. And this is not just for videographers. There's a ton, and I mean a ton of templates for photographers, right? There's a ton of Lightroom actions, not just LUTs, but Lightroom and Photoshop actions for photographers. In, the, in part two of that video on the Flash from Academy side, I even take you on websites and show you the ones that I like. And I give you an example of them. If you are a graphic artist and you're designing uh, flyers, there's a ton of stuff. There's a ton of stuff. It's just like if you're in the beat making, right? You want to make beats. There's a ton of loops and stems and samples that you can buy in packs. There's a ton of templates. Also, and this is, I'm going to give you a little more. I'm going to give you a tidbit because I'm going to, I'm going to leave the rest for the Flash from Academy side. If you want to make money, tons of places for you to make money selling your templates. It's not as hard as you think. People talk a lot about stock footage, but they don't talk about creating templates. And the money you can bring in creating templates. Whole lot. Whole lot. Um, so just something I want to put out there. Let me put that up there again. There you go. Sam T, good Let me see a question popped up with Sam T. Is uh Ty, I'm trying to niche down, but I have businesses contacting me for stuff outside my niche. Do I continue to work with these clients even though they're in different industries? Okay, so we talk about this a lot. Um, we talk about this a lot in the member side, and I'm gonna tell you why. These are what we call layups. These are what we call layups. The short answer is. Continue to work with them if they pay bills. Your, your niche is not designed. Your niche is designed to, to choose your audience so you can go after them and, 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 you, and they'll be attracted to you. These are called layups. You still do them. Why not? Don't turn the money down. We'll take it. If they can look at your website that has stuff on it by, about doctors and a veterinarian can still look at all your website designed to go after doctors and a veterinarian still can say, we want to work with you. I'm not going to tell you no. Let's go. If the price right, I'm there all night. But we got a term on the gold side where we kind of talk about that, and we kind of um, we kind of go over um, we we kind of go over how to handle it. And think about it like this: think about it like this. When you go to when you go to Olive Garden, wherever you are, Olive Garden for those who are not in America, Olive Garden is a restaurant that caters to Italian food. When you go to Olive Garden, if you look deep in their menu, they still got cheeseburgers. They still got chicken tenders. They still got things that are not, that's not Italian. Why? Because everybody who came to eat with the family may not want Italian. They may want chicken tenders. They may want a burger. The kids may want macaroni and cheese, whatever. That's not their niche. Should they stop selling it? Nah. It's a layup. It's a layup. Um, good question. Good qu question that popped in and they talk about, do you think portraits, uh, events is niche down enough? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Talk about it here. You need to go three layers deep portraits for event. No, absolutely not. Cause are you shooting award ceremonies? Are you shooting conferences? Like what, what in events are you shooting? There's a million different things in, in, in corporate events that you could be shooting. Are you shooting conventions? Are you shooting shows? There's a, there's a million different things. If I want some, if I'm a corp, if I'm have, if I'm a company and I want to bring somebody in to do our award ceremony, is that the same person that shot our Halloween party? I may not be looking at the same. What if I'm a corporate event, a corporate event photographer and I'm doing new store openings and I'm doing new, new, uh, new location launches, new product launches. Those are all corporate events. What? What says that you, and, and think about it, pictures for each event, they, they want different results, right? Pictures for a corporate event for a new store opening, those pictures aren't designed to bring more people to the store. Those people are designed to maybe be internal communications to show everybody in the company how the new store in Oklahoma went. They may be designed to 
train other people. It's just, it's not, it, it needs to be way more niche. It needs to be way more niche than that. Um, even networking events. I, I've shot networking events that was, that had, that involved cooking. I've shot network events that involve bowling. I've shot networking events that involve shooting, shooting guns. So I've shot network events to do all kinds of things. Um, you got to definitely, there's a chapter, there's a chapter in module one. There's a chapter in module one that goes through the three steps that you need to check to choose a niche. And if you don't, if you go through those three steps and one of them is based on your location. So it's not a one size fit all. One of them is based on you doing, you doing the, the research in your location because you may be setting yourself up in a niche that's not profitable. If you don't understand what to look for in your area, if that makes sense, you may be, you know, you may be in a landlocked area and you selling, you, you trying to go after a boat company and, and don't get me wrong. Hypothetically, it won't be that straightforward, but you need to under, you need to look at your area and see if the industry is viable enough to make a living on in that area. I don't want to chase $2 clients. I want to chase $20,000 clients. Um, so last week in an in accountability meeting, we were talking about why it's not a good idea to go after gym owners. They don't make the profits that you think. So I can't go after them for $20,000 videos. I can't go after barbers and, and beauty stylists for $3,000 videos. They're not going to spend $3,000 with me. The owner of the salon, because they're getting booth rent or suite rent from 50 people may want to promote on that level. But if that's my niche, I got to understand that I need to make it off $800 videos. And if that's what you choose to do, fine. I'm not. I'm working with companies that sneeze at 50,000. Because guess what? I can, it don't matter what I'm batting. I need one, two hits a month and I'm good. So it's, it, and those are things you need to understand before you pick a niche. A niche is going to be 40% of, and this is what I'm, these are things we talk about. A niche is usually 40% of what you like and 60% of what works. You have to make the determination and, and you have to be disciplined enough to say, hey, do I just want to have fun or do I want to make enough money to pay for whatever fun? I, I, how can I look at my skill set and find a way to make enough money to pay for my fun? As long as I got my camera in my hand and I'm working, I'm good, to be honest with you. It don't matter what's in front of the camera. I don't need to be entertained with what goes through my sensor. I could care less. I need to have enough money to go out and do, film, participate, travel to, be involved with whatever makes me happy. Paying my bills and providing for my kids makes me happy. I don't need to look through that lens and be happy and look at it. I don't, I don't need that. I don't need that. That's why I don't have a problem filming people talking all day because that puts me in a position where I can do what I want to do. Anyway, oh, I still got this on the screen. Let's rip this up. Anyway, let's do this. We're getting ready to wrap. I just wanted to jump on for a minute. We're probably going to do these on Tuesdays. We're going to probably definitely do these on Tuesdays. Um, but I wanted to jump on here real quick just to chop it up with y'all and kind of go over the five extra additional follow-up points from the video we dropped. We're going to probably do this once a week. I will post them on my channel. Make sure you hit, uh, you know, of course, hit the subscribe button, but make sure that you get notified when we go live. It's probably going to be Tuesdays around one-ish. Definitely Tuesdays around one-ish. Everybody else, I'm going to ask y'all to do what I always ask y'all to do. Be inspired. Be creative, but your damn show better be profitable. Stop, stop using your day job to pay for your camera. If your first camera don't pay for your second camera, you did something wrong. You did something wrong. Sam, real quick, Sam asks, is there any recession-proof niches? Hell yeah. There are niches that do better in recession. They are, there are niches that thrive in a recession. Everybody ain't hurting. In the war, everybody ain't hurting. Some people selling some people selling band-aids and bullets. They doing real good. During COVID, people who sold masks and hand sanitizer got richer than they ever got. So there are definitely some places where you can make money. And even in a perceived recession, definitely. 
Definitely, definitely. We talked a lot on this channel about what to do during those times. But anyway, y'all be safe. I'll see y'all in the next video. Stay thirsty, my friends. Thank <laughs> you.